Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at patterns of victimization, focusing on critical victimology. In our previous video, we discussed another approach to the study of victims, positivist victimology. In this video, we're going to look at an approach that developed in response to positivist victimology, and that is critical victimology. Critical victimology, like critical criminology, looks at the role of the state and the authorities rather than individuals and focuses on how the status of victim is defined by the state and its agencies. It also examines how the structure of society can impact individuals who become victims. Spencer and Walker have identified three main features of critical victimology. Firstly, it examines the role of the state in the social construction of victimhood. That is, how the state defines who is a victim. Secondly, it looks at the broader scale of victims of crime, including those that may be unaware that they are victims of crime. And finally, it critiques the process of victim blaming, particularly the approach of positivist victimology. In examining the role of the state, critical victimology focuses on the idea that the social and physical characteristics often define whether somebody is a victim or not. For example, males are less likely to be seen as victims, as they, as are the working class, despite both being more likely to be the victim of crime in society. This is due to their social and physical characteristics. For Toombs and White, the state often fails to acknowledge the victim status of those who are victims of state or corporate crime, and this can be evidenced through the recording of a verdict of death by misadventure on the 96 Liverpool fans who died in the Hillsborough tragedy in 1989. This was overturned 26 years later, when evidence that had been suppressed by the police and the government came to light. However, prior to this, successive governments failed to identify innocent football fans as victims due to their status as working class. This also applies to the victims of state crimes. Now, state crimes are crimes that are committed by the state or their agents against their own people. In many cases, that state refuses to acknowledge those wronged by the state as victims, but rather focuses on justifying their actions against the victim. Examples of this include the police shooting of Mark Duggan, which resulted in nationwide riots in 2011 failing to acknowledge Duggan was a victim, instead portraying him as a potential criminal. Similarly, actions taken by the British Armed Forces in Northern Ireland after the Bloody Sunday Massacre and the subsequent internment without trial were justified as being based upon looking after national security. John Charles de Menezes, who was shot by police shortly after the London bombings in 2005, had been mistaken for a terrorist suspect but was denied victim status through further justification of lethal force. These examples can be seen to link to Matzer and Sykes' techniques of neutralization in denying the victim status in order to refute claims of state crimes. Another example of the denial of the state's responsibility in crime is the Grenfell Tower Fire. Despite the inquiry finding that corporations approved by Chelsea and Kensington Council had placed flammable cladding on the tower block where 72 people died in 2017, the government recently failed to pass legislation that called for the immediate removal of this cladding from other buildings. Instead, they offered residents affected a loan to pay to have the cladding removed. In this instance, residents of buildings with the flammable cladding were unaware that they were victims of corporate crime. And yet, legislation has refused to acknowledge that this is the case. Finally, critical victimology looks at conducting critical analysis of the victim-blaming approach. Positivist victimology approaches can be seen to have initially denied Stephen Lawrence victim status, despite being murdered by five white males. The subsequent McPherson inquiry found that failings within the police by assuming that Lawrence had done something to precipitate his death by suggesting he had links to gangs, were signs of institutional racism in the police force. 
Furthermore, Phil Strayton outlined how the government were complicit in the victim blaming of football fans at Hillsborough, repeating the narrative offered by the Sun newspaper that the deaths were caused by drunken fans arriving late. Rather than examining the failings of the ground staff, the police and the Football Association. Critical victimology examines the social construction of the victim, which gives a voice to those that are denied this status by the media and the state. It examines crimes that are not usually highlighted within the media, often due to their complexity, and it draws attention to the conduct and denial of responsibility of those in power. However, it can be seen as limited in its reach, particularly given its opposition to the narratives put out by mainstream media and the state. In the case of Hillsborough, the work of critical victimology took almost 26 years to alter the perception of the public that those fans that died were victims. That concludes this Tutor to You sociology topic video looking at patterns of victimization, focusing on critical victimology. Thanks for watching.